My name is Nathan Vella, I'm a PhD student at the Peer College London, supervised by Professor Leroy Gardner, and today I'll be presenting an investigation on the behavior of cold form citizen bear connections within clients' groups. In this presentation, we'll first look at the practical context of these types of connections. We'll then uh, go through a brief overview of the testing program carried out and the associated results and observations. We'll compare these results to current Eurocode provisions. And finally, we'll present an analytical model which has been developed as part of the study. Flooring systems composed of cold form steam still being supporting timber boards have been gaining popularity in recent years, primarily due to the high strength to weight ratio of the cold form steel beams, the reduction in structural floor weight, the ease of recycling and the possibility of reuse, and the ease and speed of the construction process when compared to traditional flooring systems. In a typical system, the timber boards are connected to the underlying steel beams via self-drilling screws, and therefore no pre-drilling or pilot holes are required. The screws feature winged tips, which drill a hole within the timber larger than the threaded diameter, ensuring that the screw can rotate freely when drilling a hole through the steel. Once the wings come into contact with the steel, they break off, allowing a connection between the screw and the beam. Until recently, composite action in these types of flooring systems was not taken into consideration, and strength and stiffness calculations were based on the properties of the beam alone. However, recent studies have shown that there is significant increase in both strength and stiffness when timber boards are screwed to the cold form steel beams. The benefit increases with an increase in the connection slip modulus, and in timber to timber, timber to concrete, and timber to steel connections, the performance was shown to enhance when using inclined screws. Such enhancement is yet to be confirmed for code form silk timber connections. The goals of this project were therefore to develop a clear understanding of the connection through material and interaction testing, to assess the connection's response to shear loading through push-out testing, and finally to develop an accurate analytical model. So the, the test carried out can be divided into, into three batches. The first batch were the material tests, where we've carried out timber compression, uh, steel tensile, screw tensile, and screw bending tests. Information from each of these tests was then used to help guide the development of the analytical model. The second batch of tests was the interaction tests, where we've looked at timber embedment interaction, screw head pull through, and screw thread withdrawal between the screw thread and the steel sheet. And the last batch of tests were the push out tests, where we've looked at various iterations to configurations of screw tip with wings and without wings, two types of timber boards, particle board and plywood two thicknesses of steel, 2.4 and 1.5 millimeters, and two configurations of the screw, basically the ordinary screw arrangement at 90 degrees and screws at 45 degrees to the shear plane. From the resulting load displacement curves, we've extracted the ultimate load and the slip at ultimate load. The code defines slip modulus KS, which is measured between 10 and 40% of the ultimate load. And we've also defined a mid-range slip modulus, which we're labeling as KSM, measured between 40% and 70% of the ultimate load. In these two images, we're representing a summary of all the push-out tests carried out. On the left-hand side, particle board specimens, and on the right, plywood specimens. The blue curves represent the ordinary screw arrangement, the yellow curves represent uh, the inclined screws with wings, and red curves represent inclined screws without wings, while the solid lines represent the 1.5 millimeter steel, and the dashed lines represent 2.4 millimeter steel. An assessment of all these tests has shown that inclining the screws has increased the slip modulus. In fact, the co-defined slip modulus, KS, increased between 10 and 90%, while the mid-range slip modulus increased between 90 and 100%. When removing the screws, the slip modulus increased even further. This, the co-defined slip modulus increased between 40 and 140%, while the mid-range slip modulus increased between uh, 190 and 410%. When looking at ultimate loads, inclining the screws with wings gave no significant increase in ultimate loads, while when inclining the screws and removing the wings registered a marginal increase in ultimate loads. Um, all the failure modes were assessed through careful inspections of section cuts taken from the tested specimens. The first mode of failure shown here is screw failure, which occurred in the particle board specimens with the ordinary screw arrangement. And in this case, the timber around the head end of the screw restrained the head from rotating, and therefore the shear at the interface caused the screw tip to bend, inducing bending and tensile stresses, and ultimately causing the screw to snap at the position of maximum bending moment. 
The second mode of failure observed was pull through. This was observed in almost all particle bore specimens with inclined screws, showing that when inclining the screws, the axial component is predominant. When comparing this mode of failure to the previous one, it was shown that this was a more ductile mode of failure. The third mode of failure was thread withdrawal. Uh, this we, we observed in only one type of specimen, the particle bore specimen with 1.5 millimeter steel and inclined non-wing screws. And in this case, the restraint at the timber side was a combination of, head, of screw head bearing on timber and thread action. And this generated forces which were higher than those which could be withstood by the screw to steel plate junction. And the last mode of failure observed was screw rotation. This occurred in all plywood specimens. And basically in this case, the screw rotates until su sufficient axial force develops within the screw uh, to initiate pull through. In fact, all screw rotation failure modes were then uh, succeeded by pull through as the ultimate mode of failure. When comparing these um, test results to current Eurocode provisions, it was evident that the code underestimates the failure mode by about 50%. It overestimates the slip modulus by about 500% and therefore obviously yielding unconservative serviceability predictions. And when looking at the failure mode, which we're here um, labeling by numbers from one to four, uh, one being screw failure, two pull through failure, three thread withdrawal and four screw rotation failure, it was evident that the code was also incapable of accurately predicting the uh, failure mode. In fact, only 50% of the tested specimens were correctly predicted. This obviously highlights the need to develop an accurate analytical model which can um, give good predictions of the failure load and the slip modulus together with good predictions of the mode of failure. The proposed analytical model is based on three force components. Initially, the position of maximum bending moment on the screw is identified using yield theory, and then the force required to embed the screw into the underlying timber the force required to bend the screw about the position of maximum bending moment, and the force required to pull the screw through the timber are determined for each increment of slip and added to give the predicted push-out force. The model allows for variations in timber embedment, pull through and screw bending properties. It allows for varying the steel sheet thickness and for using the two types of tip configurations. And it also allows for varying the screw inclination. The model also takes into account timber damage due to uh, drilling process and the movement of the screw within the timber during the loading process. The model was validated against push-out tests, and here we're showing a sample of each mode of failure. The first two images representing screw failure and pull through failure. The blue, green, and uh, orange dashed curves represent axial pull through screw bending and timber embedment components which were then combined into the red uh, model predicted low slip response, while the solid blue line is the actual push-out test. In both images, it is evident that the model can accurately predict the low slip response while giving accurate predictions of the ultimate load, the slip at ultimate load, and correctly predicting the mode of failure. And the, these next two images were showing screw thread and screw rotation failure. Again, the model could accurately predict the low slip response and giving accurate uh, ultimate load predictions, um, slip at ultimate loads, and correctly predicting the mode of failure. When comparing the um, predicted results to the test results, it is evident that the model can accurately predict the ultimate load, slip at ultimate load, and the true slip moduli. And here we're highlighting mean prediction to test ratios. Um, and the model can also consistently accurately predict the mode of failure. In fact, all failure modes were accurate, accurately predicted. To conclude, inclined non-wing screws should be adopted where practically possible to improve the stiffness and peak load capacity of the connection. However, a site-efficient and site-friendly installation technique is yet to be identified. Varying the steel thickness within the study range had no significant effect on stiffness or peak load unless failure was governed by thread withdrawal. Connections with inclined screws generally fail by pull-through, which is a relatively ductile mode of failure when compared to the more sudden a mode of failure, screw, screw failure mode observed in the um, specimens with ordinary screws. The proposed analytical model can consistently identify the correct failure mode and can accurately predict the load, the ultimate load, the slip at ultimate load, and the two slip moduli, KS and KSM. This offers substantial improvement over the current uh, Eurocode provisions, which were shown to underestimate the failure load by about 50%, while overestimating the slip moduli by around 500%, which obviously yields unconservative serviceability predictions.
Thank you for listening. Thank you, Nathan. Uh, right on time, spot on, and a very interesting presentation as well. And uh, looks like some real insights into how those connections behave. So, can I um, encourage people to use the chat if they have uh, questions to ask? Uh, straight away, uh, hot off the mat, we've got uh, Mithila. Um, so, judging question um, for you, for you, Nathan. Yeah, good. Thanks, Pete. Um, yeah, it's interesting work. I have a few things, so hopefully, I can ask all. The first thing. Uh, what about the long-term performance? Because I believe these materials have different thermal expansion coefficient, and in particular, timber might have different thermal expansion coefficient in different direction. So what, what's your view regarding the long-term performance? Yes, definitely that will make a, uh, that will have an effect, but in this particular, uh, at this point in time, we haven't tested the long-term effects of this connection. It will be something that we'll test, obviously, at a later stage. But okay. there will be an effect. Okay. Other thing, have you tried any computational work as well, or you did experimental work only? We are also carrying out computational work, um, but we haven't presented the models because uh, they're not finally developed, so. Okay, so you didn't present any computational results, is that right? Sorry, can you read that, please? I mean, you didn't present any computational results today? No, no, no. Okay, the last thing, quick one again. So in a real joint, probably you expect more than one screw at a joint, or is it there for just single screws only? I mean, again, how that will influence the design? Okay, so in well, it depends. the The main application of these types of systems is on floor for floor plates, which will have a number of screws. Obviously, the stiffer the individual screw, the less screws you need to put on each beam. Okay, so for example, if the stiffness increased by four hundred percent, then it means that we can put four times less screws uh, to get the same uh, bending properties in the, in the composite system. So uh, yes, a connection would have multiple screws, um, but we're investigating what happens at one, around one connection, around one screw. Okay, yeah, thank you. Can I check my understanding? So did you find that the connection is less stiff than expected? The connection is uh, more stiff than the ordinary screw arrangement. So when we tested inclined screws, they were more stiff, uh, both the screws with wings and the screws without wings. Um, what we observed, however, is that when we, when we were looking at, you know, initial research on timber to timber, timber to concrete, and timber to hot road steel connections, uh, inclining the screws gave a higher increase in stiffness. Our stiffness still was high, and you've reached values of around 400% increase, which is significant. But they weren't as high as those which were recorded in previous research on other materials. And so, really, where I was going with this was sort of so if it's potentially higher, that does that mean this is going to you know work more effectively as a sort of true composite action? Because you alluded to the beginning uh, that you know we hadn't really, as a as an engineering you know profession, taken as much advantage of the, the composite actions we perhaps could have done. And you know, does that mean there's more potential for us to take advantage of that? Or is there this other complexities that mean, you know, more research is needed? Definitely. I mean, there were previous studies which confirmed that, yes, combining the, the, the or screwing the timber boards to the, to the beams has a significant effect. And that depends on the slip modulus. And what we're showing is that by inclining the screws and removing the wings, the slip modulus increased drastically. So that was obvi that would obviously mean that composite action is more uh, pronounced, more enhanced. Yes, yeah, so I think it'll be interesting to see in time how we can, you know, uh, we weave that extra benefit into into codes and design guides to sort of utilize that on site. I'm just aware of time. Uh, probably a quick question, uh, last question from Dennis. Thanks, Pete. Um, really, just follow on from uh, the question from the previous. Um, judges, I'm interested to see the number of screws required to achieve the sort of percentage of uh, composite actions. You, you know, I know you haven't actually, maybe not have reached that stage yet, but I just want to have a understanding, you know, would that be, you know, 100% or, you know, 200 times of the normal screw you need to uh, put in to achieve a certain percentage of composite actions or, you know, I just want to know, you know, some idea, some understanding from you, Nathan. So uh, this is something that we're actually testing at right now. I mean, we have been set up and we're, we're looking at how the beam would behave. But based on previous re research, uh, what, what has been done is uh, they've increased the slip modulus by increasing the number of screws. So instead of screws every 600 mil, 
with with drill screws at, for example, 75 millimeters, just to understand what happens when you increase the slip modulus. Now, in this case, as we're saying, we with inclined non weak screws, we've increased the slip modulus by 400%, which means that um, we, we're basically sort of mimicking the situation where we have instead of screws every 600 mil, screws every 150 mil, which, which is significant, which would provide a higher uh, composite action definition. But would you consider using a, a bigger size uh, screw or different yes. type? Yes, in fact, that is something also we're, we're right now we're considering also push out tests. We're carrying out beam tests, but we're also carrying out push out tests with um, innovative connectors where obviously once we understand, well, now we understood the behavior of the actual connection, we're modifying parameters in the screw to actually um, increase the, the slip modules as well. So uh, we're, we're, we're looking at different innovative screws. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Nathan. Uh, really interesting uh, discussion there.